Hi guys, it's Kay Comer in here with you again, and this is book number five. And um, I need to tell you right off the bat, this is already sold. It was sold just from posting the pictures. Now I'm I'm new at this the selling part, so I I don't know. I mean I I'm sure it's okay to do that. It is in my book, and I'm selling it on my Facebook page. But <laughs> um, anyway, it is sold, and um, I'm not going to say which one of you got it because I don't have uh, wasn't given permission to do that but I'm just going to call her my secret sister so um, this one is going out to my secret sister and it'll go out on Monday I'll have to take still photos and all that over the weekend and it's been such a hectic uh, day today we had bad storms last night and a tree down today we thought we had our winter wood cut but uh, we've been cutting winter wood again today in June so we're adding to our winter wood maybe the Lord knew we were going to have a really bad winter next year and we needed some more wood so anyway so I've been swamped today more than a swamp than normal and uh, but I've got this done um, and this is um, the grandma series we're calling it the grandma series that was somebody else's idea um, just say we're out walking along a woodland path an old deserted woodland path in the woods and off in a distance we see an old old dilapidated cabin and it looks like nobody's lived there for decades even decades so you walk over and you creep up on the porch and the porch is so creaky from all the old boards and all that and you ease toward the door and open up the door and and you can tell an old couple lived there just decades ago and and uh, you can still feel the warmth in the cabin just imagine yourself in this room and you look over across the room and you see this rocker and beside that rocker there's a stack of old old books old tattered books that grandma made decades ago and I'm saying this grandma lived in about 1942 because I did a diary for her and I did the diary in 1942 um so um but this is a uh, I always forget to tell the size of the book this is about eight by eight something like that right at eight by eight uh, it's made out of paper bags, has the three holes down the side so I can put the rags. I like to do the rags down the side. Has an old quilt in the background here. This is the old barn image I used, I think, on book number one, but I love that image, so I made two of them. I printed off two of them, and so I just went ahead and used it this uh, time. Uh, there's an elderly lady that lives uh, in our county, and um, I just went to visit her the other day, and I was telling her about my old books, and she a, was a quilter years ago she's like 88 or 89 and um, she, I was telling her you know the old buttons the old pens and all this stuff and she said well would you like to have some old pens I just happen to have some old pens and look at this big old pen so I've got a bunch of those and I didn't even have to do anything to them because they were already kind of rusty looking <laughs> so I love that old pen so we're going to open this book I'll try to stay focused here and I've got to try to hurry gosh it's been a long day I'm so tired and I want to try to get this up uh, even posted tonight because I promised I would I try to keep my promises this is just an insert book so let's set that aside for right now and this is just like always just old tattered pieces of fabric old buttons um, this is some sweet Annie right here down here it says I just want to cozy up by the fire wrapped up in a blanket sip hot chocolate and watch movies doesn't that sound like fun um, I'm calling this book uh, grandma talks about the lost art of cozy living and um, so uh, and all of my books will be grandma books they will all have this look um, different inserts of course just this and that um, I just have so much stuff like that uh, and there, there will also almost always be a writing inside and this says within the pages of this book a story will unfold of love and home and pride priorities and making memories worth more than gold so set a spell and take it in or write it that you will because the pages of this tattered book are here for you to fill this says happiness is letting go of what you think your life is supposed to look like and um, and uh, operating it for every thing that it is and what now that didn't say operating what does it say appreciating I don't know because um, it's late in the day and I'm in the barn again <laughs> And, uh, but anyway, it's not stained to where you can't see it. I just, you know, I've got the cataracts. I'm trying to remove them naturally. So, and I'm making some headway. So we'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted. This is just an old, old key. I think I bought that along, uh, the world's longest yard sale. We went in 2008 and I bought that from, I bought several from an old vendor there and, uh, love that. 
Uh, this says the art of cozy living, sleep more, more, more sleep, more music, more lattes, more moments, and it just goes on and on. Then the back has the little fern thing on there. Uh, this is believe the old buttons, the old fabric, the old paper flower, an old quilty envelope. Put a little rabbit down there. It says let's huga. Okay, we need to talk about huga. Huga, H Y G G E is pronounced Huga, H-O-O-G-A. It's pronounced like that. And it is the Danish ritual of enjoying life's simple pleasures. And that's what this whole book is about. It's about slowing down to find our way and enjoying the moment. You know, we're rushing through this life like why? Because this is our life. Uh, make the most of every, every day. And here's another Huga saying and it says huga is the art of inviting closeness and paying attention to what makes us feel open-hearted and alive enjoying life's simple pleasures a coziness of the soul speaking of the soul um several people have messaged to ask if i would do a tutorial on these books and i will um how i make them look so uh so so old i mean they they don't look like a book that's made to look old they look like an old book <laughs> Um, I had to run to um, Walmart today, and our son lives, uh, Walmart is like 15 miles away. So I ran by our sons, who lives just five minutes from Walmart, and I, I just wanted to show him one of these old books. I'd been talking about the old books, and he hadn't seen one. And I just took it in and unwrapped it. It was wrapped up in a quilt and laid it on the table and opened the quilt up. And he says, oh my gosh, mom, where did you find that book? I said, I made it. This is the books I've been making. He said, oh, I thought you were talking about ebooks or something for your website. Oh, my gosh. And he just went on and on and on. But um, this whole book is like, it's just taking us to a step back in time. And uh, what I started to say and got sidetracked, I'm so bad about that. Um, a lot of people are wanting to know how I make these books look so authentically old not like they're just made to look old but they really look like they are a book that you would walk into an old old cabin and just find this old old tattered book well i think you almost have to be an old soul to do that deep down you almost have to be that you can copy somebody else's work but um to really have the mindset to find this stuff and for the thoughts to come into your head uh, you just you really just almost have to be an old soul now i was uptown one day gosh this was 10 or 15 years ago and um my daughter and i've had this website for 10 or 15 years about 10 i guess i don't know um the uh, love home and health the um, uh, holistic health website and this woman came up to me on the sidewalk and she said um I read your uh, website every day. Uh, she said, you are such an old soul. Well, at that time, I didn't really know what an old soul was, even though I'm 71 now. I should know pretty well everything by now. But, um, I mean, it just crushed me. I thought, what an in why would she insult me right here on the sidewalk? So I went on and called our daughter, and I said, oh, my gosh, you're not going to believe it. This woman, she insulted me on the sidewalk. She said I was an old soul. And Kim said, Mom, I think if you look up old soul in the dictionary, you will be so proud she called you an old soul. Oh, slow down happiness is trying to catch you. Yes, it is. It's trying to catch all of us. We're in such a big, big hurry. Everything we do, and I'm the world's worst at it. I mean, I'll do my work, my neighbor's work, my, the kids' work, anything anybody needs done. I just, you know, I just am horrible about that. I get too many irons in the fire. This is another old homemade book, and this says... We don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. I tell my husband that all the time because, boy, is he a workaholic. Had me out there this morning. He looked out there and saw that tree down in the secret garden. I thought we made home, made it home free on the storm. But, no, I had missed a major tree down in the opening to the secret garden. He said, get your jeans on, spray yourself down with tick spray, and come with me. <laughs> I said, can't I wait till Monday? He said, no, it's happened today. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. <laughs> So, um, I put this in here especially for the secret sister that bought this book. She's going through a really rough time right now, and she and I have just kind of really connected, uh, connected, and I think she is an old soul, but it says, you have the power to heal yourself, and you need to know that. We think so often that we're helpless, and we're not. We always have the power of our minds claim let's see we always have the power of our minds claim and conscious use our power so 
I believe in natural healing. I believe God gave us all bodies that will heal themselves if we give our bodies the nutrients that it uh, needs to do so. And we don't just talk that talk around around Knob Canyon and in our uh, website. We live that life. Um, this is some chickens. I thought we could not have a grandma book without chickens. Heavenly day. Okay, and this is just a little oval. I put a rabbit on it. I love rabbits. Jenny Miller puts a, the same little rabbit in her books all the time, and I've always loved that because I collect rabbits, and I only collect them at Easter time when those really cute bunny, a storybook almost looking bunnies, or at Hobby Lobby, and I always buy a few, and I get the ones that look really old. So I just put a bunny in here, and it's got some uh, creepy cloth is what this is. I was going to tell that at the very beginning, and I forgot. Everybody's mes uh, messaging me wanting to know where am I getting the crazy cloth because they can't find it, and I kept saying, it's on Amazon. I bought mine at Dollar Tree, but it's on Amazon. And they would message back, no, it is not on Amazon. Well, that's because it's not called crazy cloth. It's called creepy cloth. <laughs> And creepy cloth, yes, it's on Amazon. <laughs> Time began in a garden. Yes, it sure did. Goodness gracious. Okay, let's see what we got here. Here's another little pocket. Love, quilty, laces. Everything's grunged, scorched. Let's see what we got here. This is another huge, and it says... Huge is a Danish word used um, when acknowledging a feeling of moment, whether alone or with friends, at home or out, ordinary or extraordinary, as cozy, charming, and special. I'm loving this huge thing. I could really use some huge uh, right now, and we're going to do a challenge at the end of the book, but don't forget, let me just tell you about the challenge right now. I think for the month of July, I'm going to try to live a totally huge Huga, not huga, huga life, a totally huga life. And I'm going to try to really slow down and take each day. Gosh, that's so hard for me because I get so many irons in the fire. And if somebody says, oh my, I, I just jumped the, right on it, I think, you know, that story I told you about, I'm not here to say the world well, you know. Um, this says you can never have too much happy. Boy, isn't that the truth? This is just some old homemade paper, some newspaper behind that, and a, some print paper. I just printed that off of Pinterest. Got that quote off of Pinterest. Put a button on it. This says the Encouragers Club. The newspaper, uh, the little uh, newsletter that I have is called the Encouragers Club, and then I got that from. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.11, I believe it is, and it says, encourage each other and build each other up. Yes, there it is, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. I think there's no greater thing that you can do than uh, to just be nice, go out of your way to be nice to other people, especially I'm so drawn to uh, the underdog, and I hate to call it even the underdog, but people that are having a really hard time and genuinely trying uh, and doing their best, but they just can't make ends meet. I love to help people like that. It just absolutely makes my day. Okay, this is just a piece of paper. It said, we had riches, and I've used this in one of the other books. They say the times were tough, tough back then, and that money was very tight, but I remember my childhood, and I know that can't be right. Mom would cook our supper, and Dad would come home at five. We all, we were all sitting at the table waiting for him to arrive. Oh, I just love that. It just goes on and on and on, and... Uh, Anything that's old, anything pertaining to old. Oops, that book fell off. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, this is a little insert that was tucked over. Oh, it was tucked over here and I missed it. Okay, let's put this over back over here where it goes. Okay, this says, what you do today is important because you are exchanging a day of your life for it. And that's some of that creepy cloth with some buttons and a pen and some old lace, some old fabric here. That's that old fabric I bought. I bought that actually this year at a yard sale. It was an old bib, an adult bib. And I came home and washed it and, and uh, ripped it up and <laughs> coffee dyed it. And This is just breathe. Lim live sa simply. I can't even talk tonight. I am so tired. I normally get up at 3 o'clock in the morning anyway. And then the storms lasted last night till way into the night. So I just, um, I didn't even go to bed. <laughs> live simply. Remain grateful. Find joy in the journey. Recipe for life. One pinch of patient, patience. <laughs> One dash of kindness. Two spoonfuls of laughter and a heap of love. Oh my gosh. 
Once she stopped rushing through life, she was amazed how much more life she had time for. Ooh, boy, that'd be nice. Scatter kindness. From Grandma with Love. That's the name of the uh, YouTube channel and uh, the uh, Facebook page. I invite you all to join all of that stuff. I'd love for you to follow anything I do. I'll be doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to try to start doing one a week now. We'll see how that goes. If you look up unorganized or unorganized in the dictionary, you will not find my name or my picture there. But I, I'm I'm sincere. I work hard. Okay, I, I was going to do something with this page, but I really like this page so well. I just wanted to leave it like that. So I just put, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. What a great saying to put in there. That just um, kind of patchworked that whole thing. Just different things there. Now, where did this go? Let's see. Let's just go ahead and look at it, and I'll tag it right there. Take this paper clip off. And this is uh, some old country churches. You know, I told you my daddy was a Baptist preacher, and he always had country churches, and I am so drawn to country churches. I'm telling you the truth. It makes me want to go out there and just try to find a building and build, um, not build, but, you know, start an old country church. Forget that contemporary music and all that mess, and let's just have church. Don't shine so others can see you. Shine so that through you, others can see him. And so then the back looks like this. That was just a big old piece of check fabric. I think that came from Hobby Lobby, but I've had it for years and years since our rag signs. But uh, you can still get it there, I'm sure. And this is just paper. I've got that off of uh, Pinterest. Printed that off of Pinterest. Okay. Now, I'm not sure where this went. I'll have to look it over in a minute and see. But let's tag it right here right now so it doesn't get in our way. If we can. Nope, we can't. I'm just going to prop it right here for now. Okay, let's see what we have in this pocket. Oh my gosh, we're 17 minutes into this video already. I hope we can make it this time. My, I'm such a blabbermouth. I get so carried away. Um, this is just paper back here. Um, fabric and, and uh, oh, burlap and buttons and creepy cloth. <laughs> I'm probably going to keep on call, calling it crazy cloth, but you all know now it's creepy cloth. This is just a pocket made out of some fabric and lace. And Let's see what we got here. Take time to notice the things that other people are overlooking. Well, is that good advice or what? For the, for goodness sakes, it just, oh my goodness gracious. And this says, life is a series of thousands of tiny miracles. Notice them. You know, there's miracles around us every day. Uh, I do notice things like that. I am big on noticing uh, things. I mean, I just am. I just, I'm goofy. Okay, this is just an old, old telephone, this book. This is like Grandma would have had. Grandma wouldn't even maybe had one in 1942. I remember when we had a telephone, and uh, gosh, when I was a little bitty girl, and it was like on Lassie, you'd pick it up, and the operator would be there, and, and I would say, I want to talk to my friend Sue, and uh, she would get Sue McCainy on the phone for me. Her daddy was a Baptist preacher, and my daddy was a Baptist preacher, and we were all really good friends. Alarm clock. This is an old, old alarm clock, and that's just really coffee dyed and scorched. And Put that back. And this is an old, old typewriter. Oh, my goodness. Uh, those of you that are baby boomers, did you have typing in school? Typing in shorthand. Oh, my word. Okay. This is Grandma's Gloves. We'll have try to have grandma's gloves in every book, grandma's gloves and grandma's handkerchiefs. So I just uh, uh, dyed those. And uh, let's see, I'm, I'm getting out of focus here. Uh, this says, no journey is too great if you find what you need, find what you seek. That is the truth. I love that old car. Oh my goodness. That flower. I love that. And this says, Every little thing is going to be all right. And that little message is to my secret sister. Every little thing, secret sister, is going to be all right. I've got faith, you've got faith, and we're going to pray. Faith, hope, and love. Those who leave everything in God's hands will eventually see God's hands in everything. Boy, I believe that. I believe that. We're not supposed to conform to the world. We are supposed to change the world ourselves. We're not supposed to conform to their ways and uh, 
things that, you know, shouldn't, let's don't get that, let's don't go there. Okay, live every moment. This is just made out of an old cutter quilt. I just cut it up, put some creepy cloth on there, an old piece of cloth, and an old, old button. I love those old buttons. And this says, once in a while, right in the middle of an, of, oh, oh gosh. Once in a while, right in the middle of ordinary life, love comes along, or my mine in, ha in the house says love comes along and gives us a fairy tale. I've got one of these uh, quotes in the house and I bought our daughter one and I just love it. Uh, I do, I mean, I, my life has been like a fairy tale storybook life. I, t I say that all the time and uh, I just have had a very blessed life. Now, not money-wise, we're not rich at all, but um, you know, we're rich in ways that really matter. I love that old rocking chair on that old porch now, where was this? I think that was here. Okay, let's see what we got here. Another big pocket. That's just some lace and a swag out of some rickrack and some big buttons. Oh, this bottle. I said I would tell the secret of the little bottle when I got to this uh, video tonight. And uh, what's in this little bottle is vanilla. Plain old vanilla out of your kitchen cabinet. And, uh, you know, uh, back in the old, old days, uh, I don't wear cologne at all. I don't like cologne. I don't like makeup. I'm just not uh, a big foo-foo person. I just like to go kind of natural if it works okay. And if it doesn't, okay, well, it doesn't bother me. So, uh, but I've never been uh, one for cologne and stuff either. So, but in the old days, uh, the, the uh, ladies used vanilla. And they would put vanilla behind their ears. And that would smell so sweet. Now that, now that I... I opened this up, I put the vanilla in there, and opened it back up later. I mean, I thought it would be fine because we keep our vanilla on our cabinets, but it smells a little musky, and I didn't put any musk in there, and those are brand new little jars. I, I use them to put oils and things in when I gave stuff away. Anyway, that's what's in the little bottle. It's plain old vanilla. It's just for looks. It's just to go in this little old book, and there's it's held up there with a pen and some embroidery thread. This is uh, another little book about Huga. Huga. Huga is taking the time to slow down. Boy, that's what I need to do. Enjoy simple things and feel cozy every day. I really, really, really need to take that to heart. Homemaking is surely in reality the most important work in the world. So that just goes on and on, but that is so true. Oh my goodness, I just, uh, excuse me, um, I just, uh, oh gosh, I, all I ever wanted to be was a homemaker, wife, mom, and homemaker, that's what I always said when all the little girls were saying they wanted to be nurses and school teachers and all that, I'd say all I wanted to be is a wife, mom, and homemaker, so it's a job you never retire from, but boy, it's the best there is, tiny happy things, sunshine through the window, singing along with the radio, that first sip of coffee in the morning, boy, isn't that great, Talking to the animals, starting a book, and then realizing you really love that book. And it just got has other things in there. So let's put that there. Here's a couple more tucks, and this is just to take you a step back in time. This one says, sometimes this is all you need. Sometimes just to ride in the country may be all you need, just to kind of pull you back down to earth, slow down your heart rate and all that. Sometimes we live in the country, but sometimes... My husband will say, get your shoes on and get in the truck. We're going to take a ride deeper into the country. <laughs> and this is another old porch with two chairs and that old, ooh, I love that porch. How I would love to have an old, old cabin like that. Nothing fancy for this old girl. Okay, and we are really to the end of the book. Oh, my goodness, 23 minutes. How in the world did we do that? Okay, this is, a, it doesn't look like there's a lot here, but this is an old cutter quilt and um, the lace and the pins and um, the paper flower, the big um, button up here. This is the grandma's hanky. This is, let's take the clip off of that. Put that back. This says, good reads from one old soul to another. And this little envelope let me back up a little bit. This envelope is just full of um, old-timey reads. 
So, um, I, and I'm not going to open it up and go through it. Uh, my daughter said I should make some of these and just do them on, uh, sell them on their own because there's some really good stuff in here. Um, well, let me just show you one. <laughs> Since you ask, let's see here. Is this the one I'm thinking of? Yes. This says, Dear children who come after me, I want to tell you how to have good, a good and rewarding life. It really is true we should do unto others as we would hope they would do unto us. None of this bickering and backstabbing because that will get you nowhere good in life. And I want you to go the distance with flying colors and on cloud nine. And that ability is available to most all of us. So stay true to thine own self. And then it just goes on and on. Um, there's some really good reads in here. The paradox of our time. And um, I think they say George Carlin made the, uh, wrote that and the Dalai Lama. But no, that was... The Paradox of Our Time was actually written by um, Dr. Bob Moorhead, uh, and I know him personally, so I know he did uh, write that. Uh, and it's just a wonderful reading about uh, the difference in, in uh, things then and now. And Dirt Roads is in there, and uh, uh, reading about yesterday, remembering yesterday, and it talks about uh, things that were the, for the baby boomers, things that we did when we were growing up. There are just some really good reads. There's eight in here, I think. And so, um, I'm just right now, I'm just going to tuck that back there like that. And then that's the back of the book. Uh, this one is already sold, as I said. It's going to go out Monday. I'll take the still shots of it tomorrow. Um, this one is really jam-packed. I will never do anything that is uh, eye candy. I've said that before, and I will never do that. I don't like eye candy myself, and... Uh, this is a book that you can just sit down and look at over and over again and read these, uh, all these little stories and things in here. There's so much in here to read. And uh, it's just something uh, you just want to, uh, I don't know, I, I just feel something when I see these books. But, um, and I, I don't mean that in a bad way because I made the books. But, <laughs> you know, it's the oldness. It's the, the authentic oldness of the books this does look exactly like something you would find in an old cabin that hadn't been lived in since the 1940s it is that old and tattered and i like the strings and loose strings and threads and all that and everything in here pretty well is old because i've collected this stuff for 50 years um I, i've bought just a very very few things but anyway this book is sold so um there's just, uh, I mean, I've showed you, I think I pretty well showed you everything in here. I'm so tired tonight, I can't even hardly think. I can't believe I got to the end of this, and I'm, I didn't even go 30 minutes on my biggest book. But um, I'm going to try to have another one next week, and I hope to post it on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. And um, I'm going to post that one, and uh, I, I think it's going to be a grandma's scrapbook. Uh, I'll post a, a preview of it later in the week, uh, and uh, then I'll know by then if I'm going to have it done by Sunday to post by Sunday. So, um, this one, uh, sold for $125, uh, shipping on these is, uh, $14. So, uh, and there's a lot of work goes in these books to make it uh, so this authentically old, if <laughs> that is a quote or word phrase, um. Uh, anyway, this goes out to my secret sister on Monday, and um, I'll have another one going by Monday. Um, I thank you all for watching. I thank you for your patience. Um, I stammer around on these videos. I'm not, uh, this is not me, the video part, <laughs> the, the working part, is, is uh, that's me. But um, I'm having trouble with the videos, but that's okay. Uh, you know, if, if I was perfect, well, I probably couldn't do these books. So, uh <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, my Facebook page is uh, from Grandma with Love. Just type that in in the search engine on Facebook and uh, uh, click to follow that. And uh, we'll have more soon. Thank you all so much, and I love you all.